Hey guys, this is Mr. Terry and this is Cellular Mechanisms of Development. So we're looking here at the very beginnings of, of kind of life. How does life actually develop into what it looks like? How do we end up with that finished product that we have at birth um, based on from that one cell that, that it started with? So we look at cellular development is divided into really four sub-processes. The first is growth. In growth, you've got the cellular division, the zygote, dividing to form new individuals. So this would be uh, the very first thing that has to happen. Of course, you start with one egg, and then from that one egg that's fertilized, you end up with this multicellular organism. So growth obviously has to be one of the steps that takes place. Differentiation. This is differences in cells that result in cell specialization. So when you look at your body, you've got cells that are muscle cells, cells that are nerve cells, cells that are... Um, bone cells or connective tissue you've got all kinds of these different cells in there that make up who you are and they're although they all have the same DNA they are different than other cells in your in your body that also have the same DNA but their function is different what they do for the body is different whether they can reproduce or not is different there's tons of differences that take place uh, pattern formation uh, detecting positional formation that guides the cell's ultimate fate. We'll look at that later on. And then morphogenesis, the development and formation of the body, namely organs and anatomical features, which will be our ending point for this chapter. So let's review what the parts of the cell cycle are, because really that's where we start. Uh, of course, you remember, hopefully, that when that sperm unites with the egg, you get a cell. And that cell would be right here, really in the G1 phase, um, it's got all of its DNA now because of, of fertilization. And you see that there's a couple right here, CDK and G1 cyclin, a couple of uh, proteins that have to be there or uh, trigger hormones that have to get the process going. So then you'll go quickly into an S phase where the DNA will be synthesized. Of course, those CD, uh, the CDK uh, and, and S cyclin is active at this point. And then eventually that will go into the G2 phase where the other parts of the cell will be ready for division. And then eventually mitosis and cytokinesis where you end up with two cells. So how does this first, uh, how do the first cell divisions take place? Well, first cell division take place in a similar fashion, but what they do is they leave out the growth phases. Uh, this process is called cleavage and it allows an enormous mass of the zygote to subdivide into larger and larger numbers of smaller and smaller cells called the blastomeres. So what you end up with is a huge egg cell that's been fertilized and it starts dividing and dividing and dividing and dividing into all these littler cells. So you end up with a ton of little cells where you haven't gone through the growth phases to allow those cells to get big. So it kind of stays about the same size, but you're just dividing the cytoplasm over and over and over again. Um, and you're leaving out a whole DNA, you're leaving out a whole synthesis phase, you're leaving out a whole G1 phase. All of that um, is uh, not really necessarily that important during this phase. And it's called a cleavage phase, formation of the blastomeres. So how much are we able to track early cell division? Um, this is a nematode, adult nematode, C. ligands. And C. ligands is amazing because we have learned so much about uh, cell determination, cell differentiation from the very first cell. And, we've, and they've actually been able to map that out. So you see here at the top, you've got the egg cell. That egg cell will split into two cells and they're able to actually track from that very first division um, which cell will then differentiate into the other parts of the, of the organism, um, and which is it just it's amazing. And you can see all of this all the way down to these very last cells that end up being the cells that this uh, adult is going to have. Um, so there's been a lot of research into this. There's been some of these that you can see here stop before they get uh, too far. Uh, you've got cell program death in there. We'll talk about some of that later. But you will, uh, the, a scientist that studied this will be able to tell from this very first cell division which cell will then be the, the, the parent cell for all these different tissues in the organism. Very fascinating. Organisms will develop a type of cell that is set aside to make new cells in the body. And these cells are called stem cells. Stem cells are, uh, there's two types that we find in the human body, um, totipotent and pluripotent. 
The codipotent cells you can see here actually come from the embryonic stem cell. Now these cells, when you put them into a cultured growth medium to keep them alive, and then you actually put them into specific culture mediums that will cause them to differentiate, you can get those totipotent cells to really become about any other cell in the body. They're pretty general and unspecialized. The other uh, stem cells that we find in the, in the adult is what we call pluripotent stem cells. Those are the cells that you find in the bone marrow. And pluripotent stem cells, when you grow them, the only thing that they do is make blood cells. So they'll make the white blood cells, they'll make red blood cells, but they will not specialize and differentiate into these other cells like the liver cells and the nerve cells and the muscle cells in the body. The totipotent ones will, but the pluripotent ones are specific to the blood cells that need to develop. And you find those in the bone marrow of the adult. Plants also have these, we call them meristem cells. We've talked about these cells in the plant unit. And uh, as we talk about that again in review, we'll, we'll discuss those later. Why is it important for cells to differentiate? Cells di dif cell differentiation and determination allow a cell to develop a particular uh, cell with particular functions. So your cells, when you think about your body, you've got cells that are specialized or determined or differentiated to being nerve cells that control uh, your nervous system and, and the functions that your nervous system control. You've got other cells that are muscle cells. If they did not differentiate, then you wouldn't have any of these different uh, functions, which in a multicellular organism is very important. We've talked about this both with plants now and with animals, that without this differentiation that takes place, you wouldn't have the stuff in plants like vascular tissue, ground tissue, you wouldn't have the spongy mesophyll where you've got photosynthesis taking place. In animals, you wouldn't have your digestive system, you wouldn't have your urinary system, you wouldn't have uh, your muscular system, your skeletal system. All of that is because of differentiation. So differentiation allows the organism to then really become larger and be able to have different roles than uh, something that is unicellular where everything is really just the same. So when we look at uh, cells that are determined, there is a specific point that cells become determined. So if you look, for instance, here in the normal situation, you've got no uh, donor cells, meaning everything is exactly how it was when the sperm and egg came together. And you will get, over time, a head area and a tail area that will differentiate that um, after that differentiation period has occurred, you get cells that are very determined head cells that are different and cells that are very determined tail cells that are different. What they have found through research is that if you take some of those tail, tail cells before, determine, uh, before differentiation has taken place or before cell determination has taken place and you graft those into the head area, whenever those cells develop, those cells will actually develop as head cells, not as tail cells. However, if you take cells here in the tail after cell determination has already taken place and you transplant them into the head, as that actually determines and, and develops, those cells will develop as tail cells even though they're in the head. So there is a specific time period where differentiation does take place, determination, so that that organism will develop the cells it's supposed to develop in the places it's supposed to develop them. There's two conditions that cause a cell to differentiate, and there's different times that, that happens, but um, there is maternally produced cytoplasmic determinants that are deposited into the egg cell by the mother, and then there's cell-cell interactions called induction. So let's, hear, let's look at two of those. So macho one is inherited from the mother, meaning it's in the cytoplasm of the egg when, before fertilization takes place. So that, that is there. And then you've got fibroblast growth factor, FGF, that is produced by cells to induce other cells to have similar function. So here we've got this green cell. In this green cell, you've got both macho one is present in the cytoplasm and you've got FGF, an inducer from a surrounding cell, okay? So when those two both come together, you get suppression of muscle genes and activation of mesenchyme or mesenchyme genes. So this cell will be a mesenchyme precursor cell. 
whenever macho one is present and no FGF is in the, any of the surrounding cells, then you end up with a muscle precursor cell. When macho one is not present in the cytoplasm, but FGF is present in the surrounding cells, you get the um, precursor for the notochord cells. When macho one is not present and there's no FGA, uh, FGF from the surrounding cells, then you end up with a nerve cord precursor. So you can see here that both of the types of things that determine cells are present here. You've got macho one, which is a cytoplasmic, comes from the mom in the cytoplasm in some cells. And during that cleavage, some of those cells are going to get that macho one, some of those cells are not. And then you've also got FGF, which is induction by cells that surround it. So cells that surround those cells will produce FGF to get all those cells in a certain area to produce a particular type of tissue or a particular type of cell as that organism develops.